Well, thank you. And, um, you know, I think you set the stage perfectly for what I was going to discuss, which is it's kind of interesting about, I would say, the attitudes or opinions of the general ophthalmology community in terms of how much can you leave behind in terms of astigmatism and still have really happy patients. And, you know, I think that, you know, it's one thing when you're dealing with a monofocal platform, but with all the new trifocal IOLs and combo EDOF multifocal, you know, all these presbyopia correcting IOLs, it's even more and more important to not leave astigmatism behind because the patients just aren't satisfied if, if you leave too much cylinder behind. So, um, so that was really the, let's see if I can get this started here. So, so you know, if you, if you look at just, you know, what is the prevalence of astigmatism? Because it's, it's interesting when you, when you look at the data around, you know, how many patients are actually getting toric IOLs, the, the numbers are far less than the amount of astigmatism that's out there. So only about 14.3% of all the IOL procedures are torics, but yet we know based on Warren Hill's data that 72% of cataract patients have more than half a diopter of astigmatism. So where, where's the disconnect? Why are, why are so many of these patients being left with their cylinder untreated? Um, and so when you kind of look at some of the um, survey data around, you know, what do, what, do, what do our colleagues think about astigmatism? What are the thresholds for treatment? Um, we know that 60% believe, um, you know, that a, a greater than a diopter um, is clinically significant. So, so less than a diopter is, is by and large by many of our peers and colleagues um, believe that to be not clinically significant. Um, you know, and, and so uh, why is that the case? Um, you know, why is it that the goal of astigmatic correction in cataract surgery is usually set at this 0.75 or greater? Um, and, it, and is that fair to our patients? Um, you know, I, I took care of a, a patient that I remember from a few years ago, um, and he told this really interesting story. Um, as is many that we take care of down in South Texas, he's a hunter, and one of his favorite things to do was to go out to the ranch and uh, shoot birds and, and also shoot clay pigeons with his, uh, with his kids. And for his whole life, he would bring up his kids to the ranch. He was able to shoot more clay pigeons than his boys were. Um, but they started beating him. Um, and, um, and, so, so, and, and he realized that the only thing it could be is my vision. So, so he, he went to a great Is that Jim Loden you're talking about? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think that is Jim. Uh, he is wearing orange, so it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> looks like him. Um, so, so he went, he realized it was his vision that, that was the reason his sons were beating him to the shooting. And so he went and got great cataract surgery, came in okay, after his cataract surgery, he was 20, 25. But the problem was his sons were still beating him at the ranch. And so he came in to get a second opinion. He's like, something went wrong with my cataract surgery. Looked at him, no, beautiful cataract surgery, perfect cataract surgery. It's just that there was three quarters of astigmatism left behind. And if we corrected for that cylinder, we showed him, yes, that's how I want to see. So we did LASIK for this gentleman and got him from 2025 to the 2015 he wanted. And that ultimately solved his original problem was he could go back to shooting the, the clay pigeons better than his children again. And so, so this was like the original cause for why he ever sought care in the first place and leaving only three quarters behind was what left him completely disappointed. And so, so we, we fixed him with LASIK. Yeah.